pot or not because like it's fucking wednesday do i need to make a reservation <laughs> He's we will know <laughs> in a few minutes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Let's so start this. I <laughs> just hit record. Oh my Run God. The generator. Record's been going. And plug I, a already, battery, I, I the generator record. and plug a battery charger into the generator hooked up to the battery for the RV. You don't need the alternator. <laughs> oh, God. Are, are your wires ready? No, because that's the problem. No, my no, one's, no one's sticking on this podcast. My, my, yeah, no. My wires are ready, but we have such fun things to talk about. As as <laughs> go, go, Joe. Go. Play the Wait, music. I have to get the, I have to get the thing up. Play the, the notes. Is, uh huh. Does anybody have, have? Don't worry about it. You have time. While the, while the music gonna, is going, you will have. Everyone's going to gonna sit here and wait while Jeff tries to get it up. Come on, come on, come on, <laughs> come on, come on. Can't do it under pressure. I can't do it under pressure. <laughs> We're all waiting. <laughs> We're Someone watching. Else can read it. Ew, this is <laughs> Seriously, go. It's Chris's week anyway. Oh, that's the wrong song. Hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> do not play. A hundred and fifty episodes. <laughs> Welcome to times. everyone. Shh, welcome to everyone racers, a show designed to the world of low dollar racing and oddball RV oh. repair culture. It doesn't matter <laughs> what kind of limit ship or lucky track dog league you run, SCCA or NASA, we won't discriminate as long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussions, tips, tricks, news, and notes in the world of amateur endurance racing. And whether it's on the spot, hella sweet, or we're lucky enough, and Chrissy gives us just the tip. We're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Whew, everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. I'm Jeff. And I'm Mental. And we are Everyone Racers. Thanks for coming back and listening to another American Motors Power Tech episode of our podcast. The Power Tech was an AMC build, 150 cubic inch four cylinder made originally from 84 to 87. It was so good. Well, no, it wasn't good. It was. It was so something that Chrysler kept making it until 2002 for the Wrangler and Dakota, which actually, interestingly enough, non sequitur here, this is why you could use a four-cylinder Dakota bell housing to make, make all everything, kinds of, all kinds of weird GM stuff it's true. to actually Supra transmissions because they actually had the same pattern like the W158 Toyota transmission so that you could use that to bolt weirdly like at a suzu 3.5 liter double cam v6 to a dakota bell housing to a this is yeah. so boring i understand I that you are a mechanic and you know all things honda how the heck do you know that this because so it's a boring. weird obscure thing that i've read somewhere <laughs> probably in the gr board anyway so anyway if you're not driving a car don't forget that you were in our bingo card because now that we're actually talking about racing stuff maybe someone will actually get bingo one of these days maybe and that'd be fun or it's That's just so, gonna get weird uh, for what you're working on like we got to go right to jeff because Totes. he was just working on something and we're we, we want to know what's going on so jeff we've been waiting a while i'm reaching for my phone uh, yeah we are 46 minutes late starting this podcast uh because uh, a, it's my father's birthday, so I was over at my father's house singing happy birthday and stuff. But we are T minus how many hours until we have to leave for the race? Oh, a lot. Uh, well, it depends 20. on if you want to get there before. I the say, I say, for most not. of you guys, of 20, less, 20, less than uh, more less than, than 20, yeah. less, less than 20, less than 20. I'm sorry, we are oh, less, a lot than less than 24. Yeah, we are a lot less than 24 hours from leaving for the race in Thompson, the Lake Chargog, GP, de Chargagagog, whatever. And uh, there's no electricity anywhere. There's no electricity in Southern Connecticut. There's no electricity in Southern New York. And there's no electricity in my father's Winnebago, which is where we sleep. And it's the only RV we have this weekend. And the only RV too. we have for a weekend. So uh, I was just with my brother. Um, I will warn you all that uh, I, I have listener feedback from a G.A. Wakeman coming up soon <laughs> because now that we are on YouTube, he actually listens to us. And here's which, all the... which, which one? That's which one? <laughs> oh. Birthday boy or the no, not? No, the non-birthday boy. All right. All right. Uh, and, and Your he brother. Has, he definitely has listener feedback, so we have to be nice. But um, I will say very gently that his mechanical ability is somewhat lower than some of us. His 
his contributions are in the era he's, he's of usually radios, electrical. electronics, and mathematics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's so, an electronics and guy. And ballast. And he's fine with super, supervision. Yes. Like, he, he can take on a, t- a supervised task and stop and ask when he needs to, and he'll be totally fine. Yes. But, so but he like, is his, his unsupervised. Un- immeasurable. Yeah, but so he's he not is, you. He has so, no knee pads. Uh, he, we, the alternator, he called a Ford dealership, and he was like, hi, big V10 alternator. Got your VIN? No VIN. Give me an alternator. Are you sure, sir? Yes. We <laughs> <Hey> got <laughs> Tree fitting. Where this I'll take is it. Oh. So he has an alternator. Oh. Uh, it may or may not be the right one. Uh, it is a Ford V10 in the Winnebago. Um, and for 40 minutes, we couldn't figure out how to open the dog box. <laughs> to get so, to the engine. Yeah. To get to the engine. Uh, so I looked under the hood. You know, the hood is like basically like a like a like a like a flap in the front of the RV and you cannot see any accessories or any engine from there. I looked inside the wheel well and I could see the entire engine. I could touch all five, five cylinders, all five spark plugs. There's, 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 there's 10, but go oh, ahead. No, no, and then go to the other side and touch the okay. other side. <laughs> I don't see any accessories anywhere. Like I don't see a power steering pump. I don't see an alternator. I don't see anything. So supposedly they all live on top of the motor and we have to get inside the dog box. We Googled, we searched. We were like, 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 here, I'm going to, I'm going to. Like click, feeling click, 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 click. in all the carpet, like there's got to be a latch in here somewhere. Exactly. Chrissy, that looked dirty. Don't do that. Uh, yeah. With what you this, were just doing, that's the dirty part. This yeah. is an ASMR <laughs> video for Jeff. Exactly. At this point, so. uh, this is, I, I was, li- so we finally found a hole. And according to the internet, if you put in a 516 Allen wrench, it will unleash the entire interior of the <laughs> truck. Um, my brother did not have a 516 Allen wrench. The biggest Allen wrench he had was a quarter inch. I said, I'm late for the podcast. Let's go home. I will hand you a whole set. So we drove home. I opened up a, you know, a, a, a Milwaukee electric drill bag and I threw in a set of English wrenches a set of English deep sockets, uh, a, uh, a, a cut off wheel, Allen wrenches. I offered a cut off wheel. He said, I don't need that and <laughs> sent him on the way. And he will text me during the show. If he manages to touch the engine. So we have live text. I'm going to just Excellent. break your heart right now. That Triton V8 is post metric. It's metric. Oh, yeah. is it? it's, it's all metric. It's metric. Is it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, damn. He has metric, but he doesn't have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> RV, rvshare.com. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so what else have you been working on, Jeff? Uh, the yard. We had the weekend off between the race and the race, between the track day and the race. And I did everything in my power to make sure that uh, my yard, also known as Jumanji. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of wildlife lives in it? looks it now looks great i did a lot of brush cleaning i used like three whole batteries of the of the weed whacker it's like i i, I like spread like uh, i like edged along the curbing it's like it's nice like you actually try as you're picking up tomorrow no, no the reason i did that is because i know that i'm not going to work on it for two weeks because we're going to be away racing so Thompson, no. uh, the RV Friday. needs. You, okay, so Friday. So you're not getting there Thursday night. Well, we um, are, but then the gates actually physically lock behind you at 10 o'clock at night. So we're not going back out to get anything. So. Sorry, not sorry. It's where we are. Yeah. It's where we are. Okay. Sh- should I? Should I also mention what else I have to do between now and racing, or should I just yeah, leave that? Please. Yeah, yeah, that's important. Uh, so Chris texted me like Monday, right? Monday afternoon. Yeah. And he said, "Hey, man, you got that fire bottle?" Any chance it's actually filled and certified? And the answer is no. 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 Uh, so tomorrow yes. morning, well, well yeah. no. Uh, so <laughs> tomorrow morning, while my brother is wrenching, trying to change an alternator that he may or may not have the right part for, and he definitely doesn't have the right wrenches for at the moment, uh, I will be driving to North Jersey to get the bottle swapped. If you are playing bingo Sweet. and you have uh, general Wakeman problems, 
This check is it. Out. This counts. If you have one, it, another one, you probably could just check that check off too. Check it off twice. <laughs> As like a free, another free space because it's pretty epic. Uh, now, I'm going to count that as someone makes fun of someone. <laughs> <laughs> the only so, really good thing about this this whole travesty is like good things, the air yeah. conditioning, is, the, 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 the RV is plugged in, the lights are on, the air conditioning is running. It's a very Yay. pleasant place to work. If you, can get, <laughs> if you can actually get to the motor, it's very nice. So, That's good. all right. So, and, and this is where I was in looking is if you'd have told me, Earlier this week, you know, don't reserve the RV. Pfft, gone. I you know, forget you. I'd already have the RV reserved. But it was Jim. Jim said, we are going to have an RV. Oh, we got the RV. We're don't fine. worry about yeah, it. The RV is available. It's just not and going anywhere. Followed some, it up yeah. with a text this morning that said, Me- you're good. Mental, it's a matter of when, not yet. <laughs> it's when. All right, so I it's, don't expect them to be there by ten o'clock Thursday when the gates close. But fortunately, <laughs> they can sleep in their RV. So it's we'll a, see them it's, Friday morning. It's, it's a it's five of us, or are we also uh, with with the yes. Okay, so all right, everyone five else got a hotel. Got it. Yep. All right. Uh, so now that we know what Jeff's working on, mental. What are you working on? <laughs> so uh, the notes say sexy pool exits and video editing and. That's 100% correct. If you folks haven't been over to our YouTube channel, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, it's going to show up as a suggested video at the end of it anyway. Uh, but if you have not been watching our YouTube channel, we submitted our bribe videos for the, uh, the, the, the new way they're doing it. If you want to be on the poll position on Saturday is you submit an I love poll video. And we had a good generic plan going in. Actually, two good generic plans. Chris and Chrissy had a great idea. You guys can keep poking. None of these things are allowed to show up until 40 seconds before the end of the video. <laughs> oh, I've tried. Okay. I have tried all of true. the editing that's tricks true. on this and, one. And, and also, you can't link to something that's not a YouTube video. We can Unless once we have a thousand subscribers. We have a thousand subscribers. Do we so have we're a thousand only, subscribers? We're so close. We are, we are 922 subscribers away. We're this close, man. So last week when I said, like don't an, worry. This is like an, yeah, this is like an <laughs> NPR fundraiser drive. It's like our goal for this hour. Is a thousand subscribers. Five dollars. Just, so, yeah. just five dollars. Uh-huh. So do us a favor, podcast listeners. Go to YouTube and subscribe. You don't ever have to watch us there because no. we're ugly. I'll no. be honest with you. Well, we're 25% yeah. ugly. Uh, but. <laughs> 25%. This no, 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 no. We're, we're 75% ugly. We're 25% pretty. All right, whatever. Uh, just hit the like button and subscribe so that we can someday post the right things. And then, Go uh, on, Mental. Tell us about the video you made. Right. So uh, in addition to, so uh, Chris and Chrissy made a hysterical I Love Poll video, and it is absolutely worth watching, if not slightly racist, but just <laughs> just, just good enough to be. Week? I to, thought of way more historical. worse we could do. Yeah. Uh, totally. Absolutely. And then, then there's the other I Love Poll video, which is, a little bit more homophobic. I, I'm not it's, sure because because I feel like we're all way too comfortable. I, with I, I was going to say it's more <laughs> homophobic. Yes, it's not phobic. In I'll any go way. with homoerotic. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it is not anti. It is promoting. <laughs> and we've got style and agenda acceptance. There it is. Yeah. So, uh, but the, both of those are actually pretty good. And also, I did. I was just telling Chris and Chrissy. I made a new intro video. So if you uh, you go to our uh, YouTube page, it's it's just a modification of our old video where I took some of the old digitized film out, made a new soundtrack, and it's a welcome to the Everyone Racers podcast. It's I think it's pretty good. We'd be interested in your feedback on it. So that's what I've been doing: work stuff and then video editing. I think that leaves Chrissy. Sure. So I, we were relaxing and now we've been some packing. Tell uh, us about so, boat sanding. I miss boat sanding. I do not. At boat, sanding. Sanding. boat sanding is done. It is, well, for now. For this year. For this year. <laughs> spent uh, the weekend up at the Cape House. We um, spent uh, had some work. Uh, we did some housework and then we did some boat time, which was awesome. We had floaty chair time. We had a beer and an E1R koozie time. Uh, then we've been back here and we've been scrambling. So I've been packing pit boxes, breakfast items, and there might be even some more burgers, maybe. Um, yeah. Eventually, as we're talking about YouTube, there's going to be a video of, of my setup uh, as we get closer to the next race. But this one was such a scramble, I figured it's not even fun to watch me scramble. So that's what we've been doing. Uh, Chris, tell us about what we did last night and today. 
Well, aside from relaxing in the boat with the Cape, I installed a water heater, which was fun because it involved taking apart a closet to get it through the door because the new one's a little wider than the old one. But uh, Yours you know, or relative? The, the cottage at the Cape House. Oh, oh okay. All right. Uh, but, you know, plumbing when you had to sweat pipes in a closet, like no. you couldn't <laughs> even fit in. Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. It feels like cheating to use shark bites and pecs. Yeah, pecs, like, man. Pecs is the way to go. Yeah. But you got to convert from, from, the, from the old copper to the pecs. And shark bites, it just pops right together. And it seals. And it works. And it's great. And then pecs with the clamps or everything else. Like, it's so, so much better than doing it. So if you don't use pecs already, get your head out of your ass and start using it. Because sweating pipes is This is terrible. now every, everyone homeowners. <laughs> everyone plumbers. Yep. <laughs> Rage. Totally. And um, RV owners. Don't forget that. <clears throat> yep. Um, done some civic race prep, which really after it ran fine at, at pit race. The only thing is the brakes are, are not pulling as evenly as I'd like. So I pulled them all apart, made sure all the caliper pins were well lubricated and also greased the edges of the pads where it rubs on the, on the caliper bracket. So everything is fully greased right now. So, and everything's greased, everything's bled, I, I don't know, whatever. It's just, the, the alignment is as even as I can make it. This is about as good as I can get it. So, um, I put some new rear tires on today and did a once over nut and bolt, put new belts in the ones we had for the, for the Z because those aren't going anywhere, a new surgical tubing. And we shot that out of pole video. I love yeah. floppy pole. Yeah. We, we also pack, pack the trailer and yeah, we we're basically packed. We just have to move stuff into the trailer and truck tomorrow morning. Yeah. It's like food and clothes and water, water. That's it. No, I didn't let all those sitting out in the car all day in the hot. All right. Yeah. News and notes. Okay. So in case you don't read your email, like mental, uh, today was announced that SEMA, the trade show with the, in the very large and very crowded Las Vegas Convention Center, will not happen this year. Uh, the governing body announced that COVID has now canceled something else that we thought was fun. Uh, they have been providing updates. It was still on, still on, maybe it's still on. But November 1's coming too quickly, and they called it. Uh, they're talking about a virtual show virtual trade show. So their partnering, partnering trade show that we don't really care about, Apex, uh, has at, held at the same time in Las Vegas and the same very crowded convention center will be held virtually. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, another email from this week, PRI, what, uh, scheduled to be in the second week of December in Indianapolis, still on schedule to be held in person. We'll see if something comes from that in the next month or two. We talked about going to that. Uh, it's more race car stuff and uh, would be interesting to go. We try to talk about going to that one. We'll see. Uh, and, inter- and if you're one of the press credential people from PRI, I would like to offer that our involvement in last year's SEMA is in no way responsible for this year's cancellation. And that's just, that's just an irresponsible conclusion to draw. So please, when we request our press passes to PRI, just, you know. We already got them. Didn't they say we could go? Yeah, yeah. They told you. They said if you were if you were SEMA, said- you'll get PRI. I uh, thought it said so. Quick question. Anybody look at their phone in the last 30 seconds? Yeah. No. Uh, while I'm, I'm booking right an now. RV? Yes. What's up? <laughs> My brother just sent a picture of the alternator. He got the, got, he got the hatch off. Great. I'm sorry. I was reading. So no. For any closer. Uh, interesting thoughts. What's trade show is going to look like post air quotes post COVID? How can you possibly social distance? How can you possibly stay away from somebody else? And who knows what that? And that's a, that's like. an interesting one. The the not just trade shows, but like San Diego Comic Con is gone. Yeah. 100 virtual. And and, and not. Not, not as much mockery. of a stretch there. Right. That's, like, that's a predisposed market. They embrace technology. Uh, but the other I think they big like one, each other. They do. The other, and you're, you're not going to get all the costumes and the fun stuff that come with the Comic-Con, but the other big one here is uh, we always have a, a they call it a furries white hat. conventions are going to be a little harder to do. No, yeah, no, I don't think so. Uh, if you're but in a furry you're, costume, you're you, have an, a, you have a face shield on. Chrissy, right. they do this thing called scritching. No, 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 that's Chrissy's, that. Chrissy's point. Different, Chrissy's point is, is you're protected. It's, it's Good. easy to plastic line the inside of your furry costume. Right? Um, right. so but the other one is the, uh, the, the, the black hat uh, hacker convention that they do out here in Vegas. This is a huge one. 
and the uh, Consumer Electronics Shows. These have yeah, both CES been canceled. One of the biggest and, shows in the world. Oh, absolutely. And uh, do not mistake for a second that a giant part of this city's budget is based on those. And they've both oh. been, they've both moved to virtual. It's, it's going to hurt. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking about because we go and how do you possibly have, you, you know, millions of people a day in this convention center? How do you have that? But then I was not thinking about all the um, things that it was living off of. So anyway, happy that we got to experience the show in all its glory. So who knows what the Again, next, next round is going to not our over. fault. It was canceled this year. <laughs> nope, not even a little. <laughs> Stop it. Maybe? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Am I am I pressing a agree and continue on this or no? Not? No. No. All not. right. Okay. No. Uh, so, in case you haven't heard, Ford has a new CEO. That's Chief Executive Officer Jim Hackett, who led Ford Motor Company's transformation since 2017 as president and CEO, has elected to retire from the company. So, Jim Farley currently is the Chief Operating Officer, and he becomes president and CEO of Ford October 1st. He was also elected to the Ford Board of Directors. He works closely with Jim Hackett uh, on the transition over the next couple of months link is in our show notes find the story literally everywhere in the not world in our show notes. yeah the link is absolutely not in our show notes because oh. i'm just not working that hard when All someone right. can go we're not if you, the type, if you type ford it finishes that sentence for you yeah on subjects of stories you can find anywhere, Gordon Murray, the mastermind behind the McLaren F1, has a new supercar. It is all over the interwebs. It's actually really cool. The Gordon Murray Automotive. And named went, after a Torx bit. Well, the whole company obviously <laughs> came out of the same <laughs> consulting firm that gave us Matt Conley Motorsports and Matt Ferencheck Motorsports and Casey Carden Motorsports. So uh, the Gordon Murray Automotive T50 hypercar is powered by a Cosworth-built V12 that makes 654 horsepower, has a red line of 12,100 RPM. Oh, wow. I want to pause there because I have a 6.29 liter V8 that red lines at 7,200 RPMs, and that is glorious. But a V12 that goes into motorcycle RPM ranges is insane. Yeah, especially when you combine that with a 2100 pound curb weight. It's the like the old McLaren F1, it's three seat style, center driving position, priced at just over three million dollars each at current exchange rates. Uh, the majority of the only 100 they're going to build have already been sold out, and this was done before they were off the sketch board. So uh, just start to Google Gordon Murray and the whole internet thing will fi uh, finish it for you if you haven't heard that. But uh, generally, I, I'm, I'm kind of geeked out about it. I love this Lazy Link podcast because there's nothing worse than like trying to like find the link and then remove where it says like Facebook <laughs> redirect. <laughs> Upcoming races! So we've got a lot of events to get through. This weekend is stacked with races like the before times. But before this news gets buried. <laughs> thank you. That's lovely. Where's it? Like no what? trombone. I, I heard that noise you, and you I looked up and Kim, Chrissy was coughing. And I'm like, what the hell? And she That's got, like, the mouthpiece of the trombone without the trombone. And got she's it. coughing into her elbow. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway. This, otherwise, this news is going to get buried like the U.S. military admitting they have alien hardware from crashes. But well, we all we're going to talk. That. Yeah, no exactly. comment. <laughs> we're going to talk about the Lucky Dog Race in Charlotte. It's next weekend, August 14th through 16th. The Who Let the Dogs Out of Charlotte Motor Speedway, brought to you by Jazz Yellow Track Days and Chill Out Systems, and is on the 2.28 mile 17 turn roval course. Three day events, 18 hours of track time. Running under the lights. Under the you know, lights, baby! You, mi you miss the early registration discount, but you can still get in on there's 10 grand in sponsor prizes. Use the super, super secret discount code Lucky Lemons. Link in our notes. Kathy's great. She runs a great series. We so wish we could be there. If you, if you can still make it, if you're down south, go. Go have fun. It's going to be a great time. Yeah. There's, there's no way that won't be awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Bill Strong and the crew from Champ Car, they're headed up to historic Virginia International Raceway for the Lifeline 24-Hour Classic. I've got to run this race a couple of years ago. It is awesome. VAR is one of those bucket list tracks you should definitely go to. But they have, and it's a proper East Coast race because they've got 71 cars. 21 of those are BMWs. Boring. Boring. 11 Miatas, 6 Hondas. 
five Porsches and a 1988 Fiero. Good luck, everyone. Be safe. Poor people. Uh, (laughs) WRL World Racing League is running the rarefied air outside of Denver for their double eights this weekend. 27 cars by last update, but we're sure there's more. We just don't have all of the list. It's getting a little out there. But uh, Roland, thanks to Roland for the list. 11 BMWs. Or is it Roland? Sorry. Still boring. Yeah, Uh, still boring. Two Miatas, one Honda, six P cars. By the way, that means Porsches. We were we got some show notes that people didn't know what the heck we were talking about when we said P cars. That's Porsches, everyone. Uh, while there's no real interesting cars, some interesting names. Meat Wagon, M E I T W A G E N. That's the- yeah, it's a meat wagon. It's a meat why wagon. Is, why, is this, <laughs> why is this a funny name? I do not understand. <laughs> we are trying to use a meat wagon. It's not uh, how you spell it. But, no, yeah. it's not. So no. scre- Screaming Code, that's another uh, Code Brown Racing. We all know about Code Brown. Uh, Looney Tunes, to name a few. Uh, good luck to our buddy Todd Carver. He will be out there with the Rocksteady Racing Miata. And, of course, we couldn't forget Lemons is at headed to Thompson Motorsports Park for the Lake Are Charts we Dogs sure? And- <laughs> well, I was like, we're leaving tomorrow, so we really <laughs> hope so. <laughs> There better be an RV and it, there. Right, and if not, we're just going to bring a car to a track. And I, I don't, then well, we'll not know. More that in the main topic. Keep going, Chrissy. <laughs> we're going to like Chargog, Minchagog, Gungagogamog, GP, as the only person that can say it. I'm not saying it again. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give you the breakdown. <laughs> right Chargogagog, Minchagogog, Chobungagogamog. Anyway, uh, 83 cars, nine very more boring BMWs, two boring. Miatas. Oh, hey, wow. Two Miatas, 12 Hondas. Honda, yo. Two <laughs> Porsches and one Sunbeam and the nice. usual cast of lunatics welcoming a new team that decided to perfect first race is the Lancia Scorpion from a team out of time. Yeah. Oh, gee, do you think that's going to be a... You're a Lemons team. It's your first race. You know it's awesome. Lancia. You are going to learn so much about lemons. Yep, they sure are. Well, they're (laughs) going to have plenty of you know people standing six feet away watching them wrench on that thing. So good luck, guys. That's fantastic. You guys have made a terrible choice, but we love that you're here. Uh I'm going to leave a beer over here for you. (laughs) So I'd like to mention that the uh, upcoming uh, Champ Car race is approximately 25% BMWs. The World <laughs> Racing League event is approximately ooh, 40% BMWs. And the Lemons race is about 10% BMWs. Because there are none so. left. There are just none left. The rest of them will be at Lucky Dog next weekend or AER. AER is also running uh, next weekend. AER is 90% BMWs. Yeah. So it's a BMW <laughs> club race. Yeah. Recent right. race results. Lucky Dog ran their Dog Days of Summer combined 10 plus 24 event at Oregon Raceway Park last weekend. A 24-hour overall went to Rocket Bunny, turning 311 laps. 10 laps back were Miata Warriors, the Race Invaders, and 11 laps from that was Squirrels of Fury, which took the B-class. For the 10-hour, Praying Mantis covered 246 laps. That's really impressive considering the 24-hour took 311. So yes. Wow. Damn. Yeah, um, seriously. While General Leaf, L-E-I-F, was two laps back and flying low racing finish on that podium with 230. So nice job, everybody. Jeez. Praying Mantis should have kept going. They could have won the whole damn deal. Seriously. Well, and I, 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 my guess, Uh, and I emailed Kathy and she was unable to get back to us by press time, uh, is something, some sort of red flag happened overnight, but yeah. Oh, that could be. Yeah. Yeah. Also a lot can happen in 14 hours. (laughs) Yeah. But you know, apparently only 60 laps. All right. If you are just now hearing this, chances are you're on your way to Thompson right now. So it's too late. But in order to assure our domination, we submitted our I Love Pole videos. Now, they garnered some response. They're on our YouTube channel. So go and check those out. Uh, Our lovely friend Ohms mentioned, uh, I will attest to the pole fixation of all these dudes fair alex f said uh he always knew the three pedal mafia loved pole and if anyone has to have words with mental you do not have to have any screaming matches ladies he drinks white claw so you know you can have a moment of woman-to-woman conversation with mental now it was technically a tetanus hard seltzer or as i call him corona hard seltzer and then uh bill eights pointed out that i am no phoebe cates no but uh, good 
good on Bill for getting the reference. And uh, on our other video, which is also delightfully produced by Chris and Chrissy, said, sucking up to the corner workers will get you nowhere without Chrissy's mom's cookies. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, commenting on last week's show, Eric K914 lover. Uh, DJ 914. DJ 914 commented, when does your streetcar become a track car episode? He said, quote, awesome. I have skirted this line for years with my track cars and a car that does both rarely does either of those things well, LOL. In addition to after listening to the previous episode, I want to thank Jeff for his petitioning for my inclusion into the flat six group. While my 914 was my first Porsche 33 years ago, he does prefer the flat six cars in most every other way, except Gouda stories. I don't know what Gouda stories are. There's, there's a lot of stories you can tell about cheese, so that's important. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sorry. Not sorry. Gouda? But it's G-O-O-D-A. Gouda? A misspelled cheese. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. All right, our Facebook. I'd like post- to mention that I, th- I believe Eric works for some sort of the federal government. So spelling, not important. I- I've seen the interviews of Trump. Yeah. Whoa, we're, whoa, we're whoa, going whoa, there. Whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> yeah, I've been I'm misspelling stuff for decades before our current commander in chief. You True. are absolutely True. right. Okay, our Facebook post post about Aaron uh, being cleared to race was almost as well received as the news itself. We can't wait to have Aaron on the team. Watch her flying middle finger all over the place. He's getting it ready. Aaron (laughs) is vibrating with excitement right now. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) You can just take that mental picture of Aaron. (laughs) Just can't handle it. Yes. Yep. So when I was, I was talking with that uh, with Matt F of Matt F Motorsports on text today about garages and he mentioned, Hey, I'm actually listening to the July 23rd podcast. Now that's the race car street car. I said, you guys are doing a great job. So apparently Matt's standards are low, but we knew that already. So <laughs> thanks Matt. <laughs> oh, is that me? oh, sorry. I, my phone is off away. Uh, here we go. Uh, Jim W from IRL and wrenching currently on the Winnebago says, Hey, now that you guys are on YouTube, I actually listen. So just mark that down for uh, how many episodes? 150 something. Yeah. My brothers listen to like four. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, by the way, he says he wanted to defend himself for a moment and say the only reason that I change all of his tires are because all of his tires live at my house, <laughs> which is true. Yep. So we, we do that here too. Yeah. So that's a yes. thing. All right. Fair enough. Racer Roto Reaction. So as most Sunday nights, the I Suck at Racing 24 Hours of Lemons I Racing League was on, and Chris and Chrissy joined me and Ryan in the announcers with Sunday night, and then Chrissy got bored, went to bed. She it was just like had at enough. the very end, and it was past my bedtime. All right, so Jay Becker won a hard fart battle to victory for the uh, two-hour Funduro at Sonoma. Ryan had actually cut the fuel capacity on the Camaros and the Mustangs, which actually called some strategy and made for an interesting race. As always, it is fun hanging out with Bearded Sim Racer. You should check him out on his YouTube, his Twitch, and uh, all of that, and tune in for any of those esports automotive actions, even outside of Lemons. He does a really good job with that stuff. This Sunday, I believe it is going to be the Silly Hats No Wheel No Pedal Race. Looking forward to that one. Absolutely. And for our own E1R race, uh, Monday night races were host. We're at Daytona Rallycross. Mental and his stupid AMG were horrible again. But at one point, apparently he did turn around, drive into the pits in order to flip two rally beetles and a guest listener in a pro chief truck. Second race was a little bit better, but uh, we're always, always hoping us. What? I'm sorry. It's just bad typing. My bad. Yeah. Hey, second race is whatever. We race on Monday nights. It's the UNR Race League. It's two of them. Usually we try to mirror the upcoming Lemons event, but almost always allow the 87 NASCARs because they're fun and stupid. Um, so email us or social media us for the password. It helps keep out the you know, North Korean spam bots and all that kind of crap. So, But uh, if you like endurance racing and you like brakes, <laughs> and you know four letters of the best endurance racing pads. Technically, st- two letters, two numbers. True. True. St- st- Bubba Wallace. St- you got Bubba it. Wallace, absolutely. Yeah. You got exactly. it. Never noticed the Bubba Wallace. And, and because I whine when they don't, the AMG GT is also usually available if you've purchased it. 
Yeah. Um, and I usually, if, if that one's available, usually we try to put it in a place that it has no business being. Oh, like we did a rally dirt at class. Sonoma, yes. yes. Yep. And, 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 or at Daytona, it wasn't much better at Daytona, but if you're driving a, if you're driving one of those legends cars, I just look at you as a super bowl. I will launch you. I, I, <laughs> I weigh more than six of you and the front of my car is a wedge and I have all of the horsepower. So yeah, I'm just going to try and put you into the stands. That's my rule. (laughs) Great. Awesome. You you know who else always tries to put people into the stands and they get her in her way? (laughs) Chrissy's mom. Hi Carol. She is a, she is up to date on her podcast because she travels now. Awesome. Well, she was a little little behind and then she was like, I, we we're talking about the race this weekend. She was like, I know everything about it because I listen to the podcast. <laughs> I'm, I'm hella behind it on my podcast because <laughs> I haven't been traveling to work back and forth since mm-hmm. March, but I started again. So since Monday, I have been furiously catching up on podcasts. Uh, I will catch up to E1R sooner or later. Yeah. Last um, few weekends, we've driven to Cape Cod. Well, Pittsburgh, uh, pit race. Yeah. Cape Cod and now Connecticut and then Cape Cod. And then, yeah. Yeah, you guys must anyway. have caught up on everything. We did. So, main topic time. If you're watching this, you're <laughs> now you're going to have nightmares. Scary. That was the scariest thing. It was. I love doing faces. <laughs> uh, we already mentioned, but I just want to catch up a few things here. We are, we, we are, it is, we are Wednesday night at nine o'clock. We have races that begin on Friday. We have uh, tech times and everything. And we probably should at least mention what's happening around the East Coast. Uh, we already mentioned our woe slash intrigue with RVs and fire bottles that need recertification. And this is kind of our first lemons back, but um, we got a lot of friends out there who are also not prepared or semi-prepared or not making it to the race. So we should probably cover some of them. Hey, Donnie, I know you're listening or maybe you're not because you have no power. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who haven't been keeping up, Donnie drove his Saturn all the way up from Floridasville, all the way to Long Island. He's hanging out with mirrors out for Tully, and they have no power at the moment, and so does a large portion of Long Island. So yep. they plan on making it, but they're running off generators as we speak. I don't know if they have any wrenching to do. I don't know what they have to do, but whatever. Have fun in the dark out there, you two. Well, we can mention half of our team is not coming. Uh, a quarter, a, qu- a third, third, sorry, third, third. Our team not coming. Yeah, so yep. they've got no power, and kids and wives and elderly relatives, and no one has any power. And pe- so, they're like houses that are flooding, right? I mean, yeah. What, what, does anyone know how to pronounce the hurricane that just came through? Is E A S? Is E A S? E A S? Yeah, something like that. The I the I one. Yeah. That hit northeast. There you go. So I'm sitting in South Jersey. Did we get hit hard? <clears throat> Meh. We lost some branches. How'd you do in Southeastern PA? Well, that we did good. okay right where we are. We got rain and that's it. Um, a little bit of a wind. Lot of, it was a lot of rain. Fine. A, a, lot a of neighbor's rain. tree fell down on, a, on their own fence and a garden. Like not a big deal. Our sump pumps were on as much as they were off during the whole thing. So we did okay, but those couple counties around us were not so okay. Um, Doylestown, Bucks County. So that's about an hour from us, uh, closer to Philly. Uh, they had some significant damage, had tornadoes and cars on top of cars and, and, uh, they had more wind. So there was kind of, as Chris noted, as we kept watching the storm, there was a side of the storm that was more wind and more rain. So we were on the rain side. So I think we get hit with the rain side too, but some ginormous trees came down in my neighborhood. It just happens that my house is already cleared. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so our southern New York section of the race team is all without power. So we will not be having Black Betty, the RX 3.8. Um, and that also means Darren, who is coming in from the South Rona states. Uh, it, 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 his it, COVID it, test cleared. He got, he's got his cleared test. So he, he's he got can, that going for him. He's allowed to enter Connecticut. But his race car won't be there, so he's decided to stay home. Yeah, but well, the and way that, hurricanes and work is in the Northeast is that if you're east of the hurricane, the, the eye wall as it passes by, that's the windy side. If you're west of it, that's the rainy side. 
Well, and you mentioned with all the trees going down, the way it always happened in Georgia and Florida is the nature of a hurricane being circular is the ground gets saturated and the wind goes in a circular. It's like working a, a, an old mailbox post out of the ground. You just work the trunk of the tree around in a circle and with the ground saturated, eventually the tree comes over. And that's why they always take the whole root ball with them that they've, they've been worked loose like an old fence post. And uh, I, I think okay. I learned to, I, my lesson about making fun of hurricanes after Hurricane Sandy when we were coming back from New Hampshire and we're just joking, oh, hurricane, whatever, you know, Chris pulls in and goes, oh gosh, I'm going to have to rake my leaves. And then we got up the next day and saw the actual devastation. And, and it was probably five, six minutes of regret before we started mocking Governor Chris Christie on the television as he was giving news conferences. So oh, he's, yeah. he's fun to mock. Oh out. my uh, gosh. That was awesome. Bad, bad lip reading for Governor Christie is fantastic. <laughs> all Love day. It. That's what we did all, all day. All of the delis will remain open. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think that was before uh, he went to the beach that was closed. It yeah. was, yes. <laughs> oh, uh, there was this there was this part where he was talking about the devastation in the uh in the boardwalk where he grew up as a kid and he was like he was like, it was right there, the store where I used to get my cheese steaks and my pizza. <laughs> and and, and, and people were, the poor guy was just upset that he lost his like favorite place it's to get a snack but man people were like oh come on come on dude how did how did you you just you just teed it up for the uh people now come on oh, without a doubt it. without a doubt yeah. so yeah right. so that's what's going on uh and we should also mention that the track right now doesn't have power nah. uh, but we have received an email from <laughs> lemons hq that says Oh, they, send it. We should, yes, we send have, it. Do they really have a power? flag? I need. I need two flags. I need one that's green. I need the one that's checkered. And they don't oh, need yeah. lights for that. They they've yeah. been running at uh, at CMP for years, and that place don't have any power. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We Toast. should we should pack um, a lot of headlights. You know what? This, they, it, they already it, licked the stamp. <laughs> it's time to send it. Yeah, yeah. I, send I it. should say this. This is the interesting thing, and we've hinted at this, and we've actually, we probably had a show on it, but. It's, uh, is, is everyone on the show that's without power, and this is not to mock them, but like one of the concerns of our teammates is his mother is without power. So he, he needs to make sure that she's taken care of, and God bless him for that. But what's interesting is none of them are really doing without. And that kind of goes to the, just, just the resourcefulness of entry-level crap can racers in general. Ah, you know what? I got a generator and a welder and a couple of tools. We're going to make this work. Well, you know, it's fine. As long as the beer's cold, we'll make it happen. And I have any of us ever been that out during a finger quotes natural disaster? We've always got kind of an alternative plan of crap laying around in our trailer. There, there was a time where I was melting water to make the uh, toilets flush in my North Jersey house because there's only so much water when you have a well pump and you lose electricity. So... That but you fun. had that you had that mindset. All right, yep, I got snow. Hey, no you had problem. a pool. You had a pool and a <laughs> yeah, bucket yeah, is all damn. you need. The worst part is, is I melted snow for like three hours, and my wife was like, "Why didn't you just get it from the pool cover?" And I went, "Okay, let's move on." All right, move let's, on. let's on. talk about the actual race. Go. Okay, so you probably got the email, but maybe you didn't read it. So let's we're gonna clip through this pretty quickly. So if you didn't, things that Which you need to know. Which is why we're all on pole position, and you losers aren't. Well, I mean, sure. we don't know that yet. We don't know that yet. <laughs> all right, drivers meeting Thursday night YouTube. Um, chances are you'll probably be driving. I would just hook in. Hopefully, you have some data that you can use from your car. Show up, show your support. Uh, it's probably gonna be the same story as usual, but it helps that you are gonna be there. I, I will. I will be tuning in, and I will give you guys the cliff notes. So I'll one one in. team member will no, be we, there. We yes. can tune in. Yeah, you can okay. tune in. We'll really, be, and, and oh, it's I'll gonna be, be we'll be sitting yeah. in the paddock by then, so it's cool. It's gonna be on later anyway. So like even if you can't make it at seven, it's still gonna be there. So watch it at eleven. Watch it whenever you can. Just watch, watch it, it, okay? But how right. do I ask stupid questions if I'm watching later? Email. Email them. Oh Nick, come on. Nick Stop. loves stupid questions no, in advance. Just that's, don't. A, that's a great way to get Come ask to get us. Right if you have floor. a dumb question, ask us. Just email don't ask email to Steve at 24 hours of <laughs> he will promptly re respond do, do um, we know who's judging eric okay so our, yeah. our our fifth host okay great which okay, is why great. i'm i'm assured that our phoebe kate's production will get us on the poll okay i've been interrupted if you have interrupt chrissy i've been interrupted at least four times today <laughs> just saying okay so 
if you want to get in, you are not allowed to get in if you're not on a list. Uh, you should need to spec if you're you're not allowed to spectate. Uh, only people are allowed there, and they're super serious about the people that are on the list. They're like, just don't even show up. They won't give you. Um, and also, uh, this is through the grapevine. If you're trying to get in, apparently New York is doing threatening some kind of check in or check where you're coming from. So people passing through New York City. One of our New York City friends said this. Not sure if there's anything what's going to happen, but just take the tap because it's, that's the better way to go. That's the tap and Z bridge. Whatever. If you the George no, Washington bridge. Don't go the, the G. Governor Mario M. Cuomo bridge. Whatever. Sure, it's actually, the tap. No. No, who cares? Yeah. It's a beautiful bridge, though. Um, There's like people right. on the West Coast going, what the hell is the tap? Eh. Well, they're not going to be here. Yeah, you're people, not going then. There are people uh, on the other side of the Mason Dixon line. Florida man Donnie's in New York right now. He has no idea what you guys are talking about. Yeah, but about. who he's traveling with knows somebody, something oh, yeah. between the GWB you, and the tap. You, so. sh- you shut up. You don't speak. We get pulled over, Donnie, all right? Because I got this. Because <laughs> if anybody says going to GWB is the right way, they're wrong. Um, okay, so... Have your license ready at the gate. There's only one wristband this time. No, whoa, whoa. no, to no table in. So just they're going to ask for you and they're going to put your put a wristband on it. Bring your own pen uh, because they're not going to have any shared pens. And Chris and I were in a place one day when we didn't have a pen, and it was awful. And you and I just wanted to die. So make sure you bring a pen and maybe you want to bring one for your friend. If it's a throwawayable, I already packed three. One of you can have one of mine if you need it. But um, don't be without a pen. Don't catch the Rona. Bring your pen. Yes, mental. And I get it. You're in your car and you're like, oh, crap, I forgot a pen. I'll just be the one. They're not giving you a pen. I, I, I just did this two weeks ago. You're not getting a pen. If you ain't got a pen, you're screwed. So I'll just, just I'll, I'll stop at mind. a friggin' gas station and buy a pack of pens. Right. Six but, up to or, the bank and steal one. Doesn't they don't have that have chain. Banks. But, <laughs> they, they're, no, you can't true. go to a bank and get TD a bank. pen. Yes, TD Bank. You get a pen everywhere. Okay, fine. All right. Uh, follow your timing for tech. So there is a tech list that you should go in. Uh, there's all kinds of instructions. One person. Oh, oh goodness. One person goes in. They have have your tech sheet ready. Um, uh, they are not going to probably give you that either. So make sure that you have one. The only cup of pens in the house that doesn't have a TD Bank pen. We steal them all the time. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so Thanks for uh, there, checking. That's there's good. a normalized. This, this is good internet. A good podcast. Good. I know. Yeah. Normalized social distancing and mask rules. Just do be smart about it. Don't stand next to people. Um, the, and the, the minimizer paddock space, which we're going to talk about a little bit. Uh, don't come talk to us. We're really fun, but you have to stand over there for a little while. Uh, with their uh, gear tech, you have to wear your gear to gear tech, including your sh- socks and your Hans. You're supposed to you not have your Hans, but make sure you bring it or at least stand in with your friend. I did gear tech uh, last in New Hampshire, and so many people forget their their crap. So show up once, bring all your shit. Don't forget it. And don't come around if it's not on you because nobody wants a bag full of stuff to you can lay it out on the table and you can get all up in people's stuff. That's all you're first. The, the gear tech thing. Can't tell you. I, it was a, a small percentage, but a double digit percentage of people that walked up with all their gear in a bag and go, hey, where's gear tech? And I would just look at them and go, can't help but notice you're not wearing it. And then they would look at me like I was stupid. When I looked at them and go, clearly you didn't read your email. So should I see you in the penalty box? I know. You're already a moron. So if you're listening to this and you have Ooh, the, hard the, mental, the Venn diagram Rah. of people that listen to this podcast and actually read their emails from lemons or two circles on top of each other. But mm, you're uh, no, he, oh, no, I'm sorry. No. Did you just say what? <laughs> you just said? I said, did you read your email? Your your wife <laughs> texted you to tell you about SEMA was canceled. Yeah, because I was reading my 24 hours of women's email. Yeah, exactly. Studying his 24 hours of women's email. I, I bet wrong. right now Aaron can recite all three emails that have been sent out <laughs> from memory. Yeah. But it, it is, yeah, so you, the judges are going to know. You come walking up with a bag full of gear, they're going to be like, oh, you're a moron. And I would offer that this is going to be the way of the future because this way people like Chrissy don't have to touch your nasty, sweaty, um, stinky serious. I was like, I'm not touching that. You put it out here, and they just would like give me the bag. I'm like, I yeah. don't know what you want me to do with it. I am not touching your dirty underwear. I oh, won't touch disgusting. my best friend's suit because it smells like butt. It does. <laughs> and I was like, Jeff, smelly man. Smell. I can't help it. I was like, this and, is disgusting. 
It is. And, and there's going to be a couple of people that have to do this on Saturday morning, myself included, because I'm going to get in too late Friday. But uh, this is just going to be not only just because this way the inspectors don't have to touch your nasty crap, but B, it goes so much faster. Uh, it is yeah. so yeah, much yeah. faster when you're wearing oh, yeah. your gear. I used it to do it as soon as I got out of the car from testing. I would just walk right walk over. That, I'm going to walk right over. That's how I ended up doing gear tech in my, my suit. Because I went over in my suit and then said, hey, do you need help? Let me just do this for you. And then I wore my suit the whole afternoon. Jeff, did you have a comment? No, I did. But it was, I don't want to touch your dirty suit. Ew, and this ew, is an improvement ew, ew. probably of Just the, don't forget yeah. like socks or uh, and, and the underwear. So if you, your suit needs underwear, a third layer, make sure you have that. No, we're not doing that. Um, Sean, so, like this. Yeah, sure. Yes, but you need to have it on. Okay. All right. Enough about gear tech. Fueling in hot pits or pumps, not, uh, and, the, and the fuel pump, the, excuse me, the hot pits are not labeled, no problem, but uh, leave your gigantic Texas size truck out of freaking hot pit lane. Or, um, oh, no, out God. of, out of the, um, that's not what I meant. Paddock. I meant the, uh, wh- no, where, yeah, where you get uh, at the pumps is what I meant. Oh, okay. Because you know, or, you, or you always try little- to try to go in that way and then you always have to like back out because one car can fit because there's so many freaking gigantic trucks there. Yes. Or the little tiny spot where you can get through the wall. Don't bring your your Texas edition F eight five eight fifty there. Just <laughs> <coughs> bring your damn wagon like everybody else. Yes, I know you parked way in the black lake because you got there late and you didn't get a garage. Yeah, you're don't absolutely care. Right. Don't ruin it for everybody else. And yes. honestly, we've we've seen most of you. You could use the workout. <laughs> Wow, shots fired. <laughs> I wasn't going there, but okay. Make, so. a, make a trailer for a bicycle. That's a lot faster. Totally. And the, the, you can the, probably the, make that around with this crap you find around. The limitarians, that little train that they hook up, that, that's not just efficient. It's entertaining to watch. Okay. It's, we're it's almost, uh, horrible. Yeah. We have a lot to talk about here. Bathrooms are going to be squeaky clean. They're going to max two people at a time. Uh, there's going to be lots of, of extra porta potties available. Not sure how it's going to go. All right, <laughs> let's move on. All right, let's talk about the paddock situation. Go. All right, here's the paddock situation. We just heard uh, track entry is going to be available on Thursday. This is rare. Usually there is the giant. Hell yeah. I'm calling in CF on incompetence. Friday morning. Yes, incompetence uh, personified. One- one poor girl there trying to check all of us in at the same time. <laughs> I and tried to like ask if I could help her. No. And, she was like, well, no. and I remember you, you tried to ask if you could help her. And yeah. then she's like, no, no, no. And then after about another minute and a half, you're like, okay. And you just grabbed two clipboards and improved the process by about 200%. Well, I don't know that I did I'm that. I, pass it back. I definitely, <laughs> oh, I probably did that. Um, but I also, because <laughs> that's what I do. I fix problems. Uh, but I also went down to track management and was like, someone has Needs to go to help that girl. <laughs> like someone, you send someone now because there are 800 people in that line. Yeah. And they're like, and, uh, oh, oh, and yeah. By the way, that lovely young woman is not to blame because no. every oh, year no. they have the same, which whoever is working there, la- the year before that, it was some dude flunky and he was all alone and the line went to the road and it's crazy, but it's not going to happen this year because you can get in Thursday. We'll but see. Oh, five to 10 PM. If you're after five, 10 PM, like my brother and I probably will be because we don't even have an alternator change yet. Um, <laughs> we'll see you at the Walmart. Okay. And then we'll come in Friday morning, just like everybody else. Uh, Thompson paddock is not huge. It's small. Uh, it, it's tight. So really, if you see a spot and there's 10 feet between you and the people around you, take it, claim it, be it, love it, live it. Don't try and get down to like near where, uh, where, tech is and stuff because those spots are reserved for those who have garages so just go to the field pick a spot and take it Uh, Mm -hmm. the weather this weekend is supposed to be great so don't worry about the floods that we've had in the past like if you're worried about if you're worried like oh i don't want the spot because it might flood it's not going to rain you'll be fine just go over the bridge go straight into the left unless you have a garage then go right but just go straight into the left first spot you see that suits your fancy go Take it. a lot of grass by the way lots yeah. of paddock space on the grass there's kind of like tears because it goes up the hill there's also if you go across the road there's the black lake that chris was talking about 
that's kind of a bit of a free for all out there. Uh, there's not really a whole lot of order. There's not lines or anything, but there's I'd totally of- rather be on the grass in a, on a hot summertime thing. True. Than sitting totally on a, a giant true. piece of pavement. Yeah. Thompson is deceptively warm. Yeah. Like some years like, it's been. They're like, oh, it's Connecticut. It's not going to be that hot. Yeah, it is. Oh, not this weekend. So it should be looking a little, like, a little cooler. Only 85 this weekend, not like the weekend. Which makes a lot of difference. The one time it was and... 95, 97. That's, that's really yeah. tough. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. lots of heat lightning. Um, no paddock up on the hill by turn 10. There's no paddocking on the hill by turn 10? No, or not, not up on the hill. That's what, like where the bonfire is. Oh, like, oh yeah, yeah. There's like the toppy. The t- big t- hill. Top- tier that's not yeah. paddock space you don't want to be up yeah there. yeah i got that i didn't know where turn 10 was uh there's so there are some garages and all the pavement near the garages is reserved for the garage people so don't bring your crap down there don't park be like oh look there's a whole bunch of spots yeah that's where judging is so don't fill those spots in either basically don't bring your cars down by the garages unless you have a garage and even us are going to be parking some of our vehicles out in the black lake because it or, runs no out. We're going to not in the Black Lake. There's too many people that need that spot. We're going to park our useless crap over in the, in the part dirt. of the oval that they're not using. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, so you can park trailers out there on the, on the oval. That is a great uh, thought because you don't need your flat trailer all weekend long. So just go stick it on the other side. Be nice to your friends. And I, and I know you're insecure and you're like, oh, but it's my trailer and I must have it. But if you're not sleeping in it, get rid of it. Get it yeah, out of Yeah, exactly. Totally. Uh, be safe the whole time. That's just we there. need the social distance and we need the space. So please give us the space. Uh, I, I have to say that this is like the most reasonably priced fuel that we have at any of the tracks we go to. I don't know why they do run out sometimes, but we once did the math on whether I bring the drum or don't bring the drum and we go off and it, it was a reasonable difference between on track and off track pricing. Yeah. So it, it's, it's varied a little bit, but it's better than most, but Hey, this week we only have one car. So we're, we've got eight jugs. <laughs> That's probably all we need. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they, they do have a backup tanker on site. It's always, they, they've sub, sometimes they run out of gas, but then they like, then an hour later, they're like, Oh, we got gas again. So I guess they drop it back into the tanks. Um, top, top tip. Uh, this is this is actually a great tip, and it's one of the things that has annoyed me about Thompson for years and years and years is the blend line at Thompson. So at Pit Out, uh, you were at the fastest part of the straight, and you are at the part of the straight where people start going three and four wide because they're about to have the dog fight for turn one. So you know, it's, 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 a, there's a part of the straight where everybody's in a row and you're all kind of like training down. And then there's a part of the straight where you start to like go, Oh, that guy's going to break further than me. So I'm going to go out here. So you got to really mind the blend line. And I don't just mean mind the blend line when you're coming onto track, but you also have to mind the blend line when you're going down into turn one, that is and, uh, not yeah. somewhere you should be going over. If you look back on and- our YouTube of our Thompson updates, that was how the Mia, uh, the the Honda got its first hit in that quarter panel of the weekend of uh, what I believe was two. It was something yeah. That- it, it, if you're coming on, if you're not even coming onto the track, if you're just going down, but you you're not that fast, but someone's coming onto track, look behind you before you just kind of randomly walk your way left because. <laughs> <laughs> the faster cars are doing like 115, 120 at this spot. So the f- yeah. truly fast cars are yeah. even, you know, you're, that, you're, that's, you're a, that's about it. Yeah. And, yeah, and they're, you're, they're hauling. And I, Tully's and us and some other Betty is, yeah, they're well up there. I, I'm not going to call them out by name, but on a Suncock, uh, <laughs> We were battling with them for first place. I We were in a very first fast Honda. We were only a lap or two behind. And I watched them blend line violate a lot and put themselves into a really dangerous situation. They eventually did get a black flag for it. But, um, yeah, don't, don't, don't mess with the blend line. It's Thompson. It's dangerous. Yeah, it's absolutely. Cool. Go. And before it's time to do. Uh, yeah, tell, tell us about the rest of the track. It is, it is, and, and uh, but I, I just want to get this out there. If somebody, if you're walking around, because we all do it, I, we even have a name for it around here. It's the, I forgot my mask face. You know, you're walking up to Home Depot. Ah, I forgot my mask. Yeah, you go back to your car, get your mask. If somebody says, hey, brother, you need a mask. Um, that's not an insult to your manhood. 
Uh, and I don't know why only dudes seem to find this insulting. Uh, it's also not an assault on your freedom. It's not a political statement. It's not an endorsement of a political candidate. It is a recognition that if you guys don't wear a mask, and I've said, I should say you folks, if you folks don't wear a mask, we're not going to get to do this again for a really, really long time. So just when it comes to the mask and the stuff, just check your ego at the door. And, and I, I would love to say this is my last soapbox, but I had an entire rant on the, the, the safety thing that I took out. But um, yeah, so just, just, just play the game, man. Even if you don't agree with it, just play the game because we're all just here to race cars. You can go cough on your teammates in your paddock all you want. I'm down with that. Lick, your teammates. lick their stuff. That's great. No, let's just, not even joke about this, okay? Like, let's no, not. Just, but just. Don't, don't it do yourself. it to anybody. And, and, and okay. the other thing is, is if, you know, I'll, I've done it. We've all done it. You're walking around and somebody goes, hey, man, you need a mask. They're not insulting you. They're just reminding you that there are rules we have to play by. It's the same way that when you're, when you're on pit lane and your visor's up and somebody says, hey, man, visor's down. They're not insulting you. They're trying to keep you from getting a black flag. Yep. Awesome. Let's go to the turn by turn. Let's go to the yeah. turn by turn. Track walk turn by turn all the things that we've learned. So please interject with anything that you guys have to add for this. Cause we've all run Thompson. So uh, some of you may have heard this before, but Hey, you know what, if not enjoy, uh, otherwise this is a good refresher because none of us have been racing for or many, most of us in the Northeast <laughs> have not been racing for a long time. We are all rusty. So that's my first thing I want to say is if you have not set wheel on track in months, take it easy. Tranquilo poppy. Everyone has a different rusty. Your rusty might be slow. Your rusty might That's be for Santiago, over... by the way. I would like to get a pronunciation uh, scale on my Spanish. Okay, great. Your rusty might be overdriving the hell out of your car and spinning out. Don't, don't do any of those things. Try just to take it easy. Bring yourself back gradually. Warm yourself up. Remember what you're doing. Unless you've done this recently, you will be rusty. It happened to all of us two weeks ago at pit race after not racing since October. It was great to have that tune up. If you haven't had it, be careful because this is what you're going to make mistakes because you're so charged up. You're so ready to go. So excited to be racing. Right. Yeah. Don't let the red mist overcome you. Work yourself into it. Don't ruin anyone else's weekend or your own. So starting the straight. Jeff addressed the blend line. Thank you very much. The straight, first off, it's not quite straight. There's a kink to the left right at the blend line. That's when things start to get bad. Don't be the one to pinch someone off into the grass toward the inside there because you're trying to straighten it out. We're all trying to make room. The straight also goes uphill in the braking zone and then flattens out after the one board. So that means you've got a little more braking power there than you think you should because of that uphill. So usually if you break around the three, that gets you off the gas in time for the turn for one, you know, about one is usually when I start to come off a little bit off the brakes, but I don't come all the way off the brakes until I'm into the corner. You trail your brakes into turn one a little bit if you can. One is pretty tight. Yeah. But you, when you're coming with all that speed down the straight, you can trail into one. It's okay. But just watch out because if you try, if you get on the brakes hard when you're going uphill, as soon as you crest that hill, you're going to lose that traction. You're going to lock them up, and you're not going to have the braking power that, or the turning power you think you should. So you have to modulate your brakes, do most of the braking early, gradually back it off, and trail yourself into one. Mental. Is it my imagination, but also at that, that little kink on the not straight straight, does it narrow a little bit? Or is it, do I just feel like that because I've got a blend line and then the trees get a little bit closer? Yeah, it, it's mostly you feel like it, which is why so many people, if they're not on the left-hand side, they kind of they, they cheat to the left, <laughs> which if you're the car on the left, you get pinched and that's when people put wheels off there and they're going to really high speed and they're trying to brake and that's when people spin and hit stuff and like really be careful there. Like, watch your mirrors before you move, please. Um, turn one. It is off camber initially. So when you first start turning in, you're going to feel like I got nothing. But halfway through the corner, you get the camber back. So you trail the brakes in and then power yourself out of it. There is curbing on the left. The curbing is okay. It's not tragic. But if you stay on the curbing too long, there is a ditch after the curbing that will <laughs> break your car. So don't stay on that into the ditch. Otherwise, your teammates are going to have to rebuild their splitter when you get home. And yes. That's no fun. Yes, yep. you will. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't do that. Uh, 
Number two, turn two, is this an extension for one and setup for three? So whatever, just, this is just however you carry yourself out of one. It's, I usually end up tracking it about two thirds of the way and then go back to the right to set up for three. This is nothing. Three is a pretty standard 90 degree left turn. It is slightly off camber, especially on the outside, and it goes uphill right afterwards. Nothing really exciting about it. My end of braking is usually just before turn in, because then you get back on the gas for a short straight right afterwards. Mental, you had your hand up for something? And I'm sorry, what I wanted to talk about is, you know, the turn. It's a very simple turn. But so many people tend to, uh, and it's labeled here as the golf club turn. That's two. That was, That's yes. two. Yeah, this three, is three, is, three is there. Right. Before we get into three. Left. But last year, more than three cars had to be towed out of the runoff out of two. Because that's like where right they were all. Here. Yeah, exactly where Jeff is pointing right now. If you're watching this. On I don't YouTube. even know how you do that, honestly. But but like three or four cars did because they underestimated the absolute simplicity of everything he just said is an extension of one and a setup for three. Just, yeah, I don't even know how you can do that. So, yeah, three is the left by the access road. That's what we're just talking about there. And because you're sharing your screen, I can't see my notes. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> have, how do I minimize this? <laughs> oh, okay, fine. Can, no, can I say something about fine. three? Can I say something yeah, about three? Um, please. The, probably the most important flag station and the track is right there because this is a very blind section that I think a lot of things kind of happen. So a lot of that, seeing missing a yellow there can be very disastrous. Or coming on to the straight, like, there, like you're down going over here. a blind. No, no, no. Uh, well, th- where you just no, were. there's actually there's a whole bunch of really important. It's <laughs> true. It's true. All <laughs> the flag really. state, all the flag stations are important. No, but they're really because there's blind hills, there's blind corners, there's yeah. stuff you have no way of seeing a lot of where people are going to spin. So like, and sometimes there's traffic if there's something yeah. happening in the next corner. It yeah. and this, you know, it, after three, four, where oh, I can't see it. That's the problem. Um, yes. It's a, it is, it's a, it's a flag station on the left side as you enter three. You can see it clear out there, and they're actually pretty good at, uh, about signaling, and they can see things that you can't see. So that needs to be in your cross check. Otherwise, you're going to roll yourself into a high speed bad situation. Yeah, Jeff, you can leave that up. I've got my everything to split screen now. Got so it. Good. Got it. There we go. <clears throat> All right. So four. That's also the clubhouse turn on here is what it's called, and we take the the far one. We don't take the little short short cutoff turn that you see there it's all the way up to the end this is a really tight right hand hairpin like really tight Mm -hmm. on the straight leading up to it though is like the main straight it's subtly uphill and then not so be careful with that with your braking you can get a lot of braking on the uphill part but then you lose it all right afterwards um that it is off camber all the way around. Yes, it, it is. is. It is really slow. You have to slow yourself way, way down and then throw the tiller way over. Yes. I usually like a single late apex. Yes. Later than you could possibly imagine. Yep, exactly. Mm-hmm. Single late apex and then get on the gas. You're going to push wide. There is room to the outside. There is a curb. There is pavement beyond the curb, but it's rough. So try to avoid it. The curb can. is, I'm pretty sure, pretty rough too. Yeah, it is. Yes. Like, so, like you, you can get saved if you do it wrong, but you don't want to try to do it right. Just single late apex and you'll be happy. And recognize that not all of your competitors on the track listen to this brilliant podcast. And so many of them, especially early on Saturday morning, are going to screw that turn up colossally. Yeah. And I just your, hang out and wait yeah. on the inside and wait for them <laughs> there to push wide and then scoot on the inside. Behind and, and use your instincts. You know the morons when you see them on the track and you know the ones. And it's not slow cars. Um, one of the cars, like the, we like the tuna here. They were actually really good in that turn. But they, were, they knew they were slow and they, just, they were predictable. But there'll be a lot of folks that go in there and they cook that way too hard. If you find yourself on the outside of a heavier car, you could find yourself tangled up in, in some twisted metal. So it's, a, it's an endurance race. Don't be so anxious that you're passing on the outside of that clubhouse turn, especially on Saturday morning. Yep. My end of braking here is just after turning because I'm trying to keep a little weight on the nose to actually get the car to go around. Mm-hmm. So you know, yep. it's, it's just a little, just a tiny bit of trail, like not much because you can't ask the front, corner, front tires to do all that much on that one. So 
All right. Anyway, uh, five and six. This is under so the bridge. Be before we get there, this is one of my favorite uh, passing zones. Okay. Between because I five. think a lot of people screw up the clubhouse turn yep. and they it's don't. It's wide here. here, so you can really set somebody up in this kind of area. Kind but of. You've got to. You've got to be way faster because you've get you you can get around them, but you've got to have enough power to get around them quickly. Yeah, yeah. it's short. All right, five and six is the under the bridge turn onto the stock car oval. You can't see anything that's going on. Um, <laughs> and if you're going to pass someone here, you've got to set yourself up so they definitely see you before you start. Because if they're looking all the way through the corner and you try to cut yourself on the inside, they're probably not watching you. No. So, you know, and also they're, if you're on the outside, they're probably not watching you there. So they could, you really get yourself set yourself up well on this one. If you're, you can make some great passes though. Like if you've got someone that you can get next to and they see you, um, I've passed a lot of people here, um, yeah. but you've got to be careful. So this can be a double or single apex. I haven't really found one or the other is especially faster. I think a single later apex I prefer. Um, you drove the, me around that course and you made me do both of them. And I'm a lot more comfortable with the second, with your single late, super late apex. It just, it, yeah. it, the other one made my heart rate go up too much. Yeah. For the, uh, for the, for the new people of the podcast, single late apex means outside, 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 outside in. Well, it and means yeah. outside, outside, outside. Your brain is going turn, turn, turn. You go, no, no, yeah. no. And then you, then you turn. And, yeah. and the double apex means you're in here, out here, in here. This does not yeah. help anybody who's this doesn't help not anybody. listening. <laughs> so, sure. um, right. so I, I think we'll just talk it through. Jeff. Something yeah. that's helpful here is to your is eyes up. If you're looking towards the track out where you're going at the little patch that's over across there, I think you can get away with the single apex. If you are not watching yourself go around the corner and you're just going to take the apex and if you're looking out, out and at the next, as soon as you shoot out that end, I think eyes up in that corner is very didn't, helpful to be able to Did you the, call it a, the, the, the Dorito or something when we did our track Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting okay, there. Okay, sorry. First stuff, the, the corner workers are on your right after you kind of over the, under the bridge. There's corner workers on the right telling you what's going on in the oval. So know that. The apex that I always point for here is after you've come under the bridge, you're st right as the pavement changes from the you know, new stuff under the bridge to the old stock car oval, you lose camber. But right on the left is a little triangular patch of pavement. And that's what I shoot for for an apex. If you apex there, you're, you're going to be set up well for the fact that you're about to lose all your camber. And the fact that the pavement's about to get old and crappy and slippery. So you have to get all your turning done on the, on the newer pavement before you get to the oval, if you can. That's why you aim for that little triangle. And once you see it once, you'll see it every time. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. There's a triangle on the left at the apex. It's all the way around the corner, but that's there. And if that's your apex, you'll do fine. Um, exactly. Especially because as you come out onto the oval, um, a track off, there's there's a big ditch because a lot of people go off and they go off early. <laughs> so, and the curbing isn't nearly big enough, the candies. So you, if you go too off early, you hit a big bump to get onto the curbing and then another big bump on the side. And then a big bump after it, just if you apex late enough, you'll be able to enjoy the straight on the oval and not have to worry about the track out. And it's, it's a patience corner five and six. It's wait, 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 go. And there's a few patience corners in this track. That's one of them. Cool. Seven and eight. This is the top of the oval. I think there are essentially two lines on this, inside and outside. There's not a huge difference in speed between them. So a lot of it's just going to be pick where, where the traffic is not. Um, in our car, some testing I did, I found the outside line is faster when there's limited traffic, but it's really close. So the outside line is stay up on the banking as you come into the oval and they have a line of cones to keep you from actually just going around the oval. And those will last two, maybe three laps. They, they last long. All of them usually, last yeah. for a while. Everyone's oh, yeah, one they, of get them. A, they get adjusted pretty quickly. Most people don't want to go up that high. 
Um, but I think it works better because what you're doing then is you're, you get a lot of your turning done while you have the banking of the oval. Yes. Um, and I think it works pretty effectively. So you kind of come up to the cones, stay up on the banking, break super late, and then turn in hard while you're on the banking. And at the bottom, when you get to the newer stuff, your suspension is loaded and you're going to get a bump. And then you, you know it's going to unload. So you've got to unwind the wheel a little bit after that bump because you're not going to be able to keep that, that level of turn in. So turn in hard, unwind at the bottom, carry speeds to the sweeper, and keep the apex really pretty late here because the kind of the spot you want to track out normally and go back onto the oval again, there's a really big bump in the middle and it will upset the car. So if you're, if you are coming around the corner and you're going to make a super late apex and, you know, and you're flat out going out of that full straight, great. If you're not going to make it and you're starting to push wide, give up a little bit and go wide because you'll miss this big ass bump that's on the transition. So point at the, the, the T for Thompson, whatever it is there and that's, get, uh, get out of the way. Gonna, yeah. The T, you, T for Thompson is right on this wall on the far side of the track. Let me, yeah. let me just say real quick here, how you can tell where the bumps are is the color of the pavement because the bumps, when people hit it, their, their, their tires are being rubbed off in those spots. So you can kind of see like where the paint exists and where the paint doesn't and where the dark exists and where the dark doesn't. So you, you're going to use those visual cues and the, the, the T for Thompson. So yeah. when he says T for Thompson, on the outside, there are going to be concrete uh, barriers that they lay out there. And it on says your left Thompson, at that point. On your left, correct. On your left, and it says Thompson Speedway. Uh, and ex you'll, there, there's a star and then a Thompson. And I think my first, because we went out on Friday and I, he kept saying T for Thompson. I'm like, what the heck is he talking about? And then on Sunday, I'm like, oh, T for Thompson. It's right there. It's another one of those. Once you see it, it it's there. So look yes. on your left and it is, it's spelled out. It'll be a little faded, but once take, even if you don't get on the track before you uh, get on the green flag, Take a recon lap and look for all these visual markers because everything Chris is telling you is spot on. And once I saw everything he was telling me, I was within a half second of him. But it took me 30 minutes in two different cars to figure that out. Yeah. And I don't think it's a temporary barrier. It's the wall of the oval. Oh, yeah. It's a concrete wall. You don't want to hit it. Don't get near it. No, don't not, get near it. Don't get near it. <laughs> you're not, not no, going to no, hit no, it. No. But also, if, if you're passing people wide here, watch out because – People aren't Bottom necessarily watching. They're not watching they're, behind yeah. you. They're also watching narrow, behind they're just, too. Yeah, like, they're just going to come out into you. It happens all the time. Um, and then, so you go down this little straight there toward nine. Nine is coming off the oval, but it narrows where you're going to transition from the oval to the road course again. Like, those transitions are important. I think most cars, you're going to be able to stay, and this is hard for people to do, stay on the gas until you're just over the bump. <laughs> and it is so counterintuitive. Oh my God. Even after you do it, it goes against every grain in your, your, your DNA. Don't uh -huh. do, don't stay on the gas. Don't stay on the gas. You stay on the gas. It works pretty well. If anything, just, just a, like a lift maybe before the bump and then break afterwards. You don't want to be breaking over the bump. So once you're over the bump, then you can your apex is basically the, the spot where as soon as the new track peels off on the left, that's your apex is where the, the, the new track and the old track start to diverge. Um, so as soon as you're over that bump, though, stay in a straight line and break hard because you're going to be set up well to break in a straight line. And because of that, that's why you can stay on the gas all that way all down that straight out of the on the oval is because you're going to be able to break really hard there in what they call the shoot coming into nine. Uh, so my, my end of breaking is right kind of before turn in. You have to turn in early enough, though, because you do not track out of nine. Your track out is your turn in for 10. Yes. So there is no track out. There's a tiny little, like, 50 feet section there that's straight, I like to kind of get the car gathered up and actually be straight at the left side of the track there because now you're starting to set up for the fastest part of the track um, because 10 is just a setup corner for 11, which is just a setup for the straight. And, and so. Chrissy mentioned this, the track <laughs> narrows substantially. And I, I, 
I, I remember getting this feedback. I was driving the Fisher's BMW last year and Chris was out in the Honda and we were duking it out with an absolute clown show of a bunch of D bag teams in a BMW. And as if they, they're we, ever driving anything else. The, here's the uh, thing is the Fisher's, the Fisher's have an E36 and they're not D bags. Sure. Yeah. So there's, but there's, anyway. there's a Miata or two that's D bags too. Oh, true. Very true. true. Yeah. Absolutely true. But we're, we're coming into this corner and, uh, I which saw corner it, just so I can have it coming out of the shoot okay. and, and, Coming off the, the oval straightaway, I'm pointing at my screen. Why can't you see this? Coming off the oval straightaway, it is, it is actually wide there. And if, if you're certain of the driver in front of your situational awareness, you can get a good pass there. And if you're one of the slower cars, just be aware you're going to get passed on the right and the left probably at the same time. But as yeah. you dig into that left-hand corner, it narrows substantially. Now, we were three wide coming off there. And we go into the chute and this BMW stuck his nose between me and Chris as Chris was executing a pass on me into the diving turn. And I just remember looking over going, do you think there is room for three cars here? Are you out of your mind? But unable to verbalize that the visual was a single finger coming out of the window. It was a Rhode Island wave. I mean, Rhode Island's really close, so it's, it's, and, and it's I just, okay. And I just remember because after Only we someone both, from Massachusetts calls that a Rhode Island wave, by the way. Yeah. And as, as we got out of the car, Chris goes, you know, I saw your Rhode Island wave to those douchebags in the BMW. And I'm like, ah, you just pissed me off. So they just, totally deserved it. Yeah. Yeah. Just bear in mind, the road narrows there. And, and even if you are 100% on your situational awareness, recognize that everyone around you is not going to. And again, I come back to, it's an endurance race. And if someone wants to be a moron, let them in front of you because you'll pass them on the straightaway because they're going to they're gonna screw up everything Chris is going to tell you and they're not going to have the speed. Sorry. Chrissy, I hate, okay. I hate to quiz you because we have totally not set this up. Uh, HPDE2, what is the most important part of the track? The corner before the straight. The Duh. corner before the longest straight. <laughs> da, 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 da. We think I don't listen? Track days. You learn such good stuff. I've Go been ahead, telling you this guys this stuff for years. You don't listen to me, though. No. Anyway. 10, <laughs> no. 10, is, 10 on the map here is called a diving turn. This is just a setup corner for 11. It is a 90 degree right. It is off camber and it is downhill. Yes. So you can't, you do not have as much speed here as you think because you know, the camber is going against you and the downhill is going against you. Fun place so, to watch the hotheads absolutely oh yeah. lose their shit. <laughs> but this is it because it's a 90 degree turn. It's just kind of a normal inside out, you know, outside, inside, outside apex corner you're going to want to track all the way out you may or may not to need to break at the end of the left curbing um as you're tracking out they basically you basically track out keep going the, the slowest cars will at least need to lift to set the note well how about this all but the slowest cars are going to need to at least lift some up break mm -hmm. i usually mm -hmm. like a nice solid off on lift don't need the brake, but just enough. It, it slows you down just you, a little bit. You mean in you 11? Need. Setting uh, up for 11. This is, this is out of 10. Setting out of up 10. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Down. Okay. So yeah the track getting, because, dives down a little and then comes up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because 10 just sets you up for 11, where they kind of get talked about together. So as you're coming out, you're tracked out of a 10. At the end of the, right about the end of the curbing on the left, that's where I usually do my little lift and then back on the gas gradually. Don't, you know, don't smack back on the gas, Chef. It's not binary, but just ease your way back into it. In a Miata, it's binary. It sure. <laughs> yeah. In the old Honda, it was binary. That's true. So here we go for the long straight. 11 is very deceptive going in because it looks really small, and you cannot see the way out of the corner at all. It looks tight and it goes off and you can't see it. So you don't know that you can carry lots of speed and that there's a ton of track out and there's an uphill, which is going to compress your suspension and give you more grip. So come into it, you know, just after your, your lift or touch of the brakes at the end of 10, patiently ease onto the gas in 11, get to that apex and hang on to it, but you can then start to track out and stay on the gas as you start to come up the hill, as the track widens out, 
and you get toward the straight. But now be careful though, because I see so, some people track way out here and then it narrows back down on the straight and they have to kind of cut back hard to the right, which causes problems for people behind them. So there is room if you screw up, but don't regularly track all the way out because you don't need to if you've done it properly. Yeah. Uh, can and, I mention real quick, those watching on the podcast, this looks like a pre-production uh, diagram. So the, the widths that we're talking about aren't exactly referenced here. Right. I would also say that that turn that Chris just walked through is the most viscerally satisfactory turn of the track. When you get it right, you're going to know it immediately. And it'll take you a little while because it, it, it requires faith in your race car to crest that hill with your foot on the throttle and let it wiggle a little bit. But when you do, you're like, oh, that's what he was talking about. This is awesome. And done properly, the exit out of 11 will totally jack up your math for turn one because you were going so much faster. Yeah, yeah that is that is absolutely true. If you do do this right, and this is a scary straight because this straight is fast and yeah. it narrows and it goes into a tight ass turn that most people don't know how to do. Yeah, And we like, already mentioned a blend line that people screw up. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that, you know, when I'm coming into that dog leg in the Honda, we're doing like 115. We're at the top of fifth or maybe even to six, depending on the run you get. So like, that's when it's scary to be trying to pass somebody, even though there's plenty of room, it looks like there's lots of room. If they creep left because they're not seeing you, that's really tough. So keep yeah. like, watch out. If you're, if you're in a fast car, again, it's an endurance race. Give up that position because if you were catching them on the straightaway, you'll catch them again and yeah. you don't need to endanger them or you. It's just hard when someone moves over, when you look like you got all the room <laughs> in the world. If, oh if, yeah. When That's a whole a, different world. Right. When you've got a 30 mile an hour closing speed, at least, and they're just moving over to, to yeah. be careful. Just, I'm just saying for people that are on there, if you're not up against the left side of the track, don't squeeze the people that are going to pass you down on here. the left. I, I should mention two things down here by uh, pit in. Um, a, this is probably one of the easiest, gentlest pit ins in, in the mm. tracks that we run. Pit in people never get in your way because they are not in the way at all. And right down here is where on Sunday afternoon, half Dan will blow your freaking doors off in that Cadillac yep. and pass yep. like everybody three wide with two hills <laughs> on the dirt. And I'll be like, man, how does he make that Cadillac fly like that? Uh, America! Also, also the point, just as you're cresting the hill on Just 11 like right is, a, is a flag station on your right yeah. that you need to see because you can't see a damn thing over the top of that and you're probably doing 80 so watch yeah. that flag yeah yep. awesome should i unshare are we done yes. talking? Yeah. well we're done talking about that uh and i i was scared of this track last year because i'd never driven it and i'm watching all the videos and it's hard to understand on video. We've talked about this. Video is very helpful, but it's hard to understand on video because it is a conglomeration of a circle track and the portion of the circle track that we run, we run in the opposite direction. Do we? I had yeah. no idea. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. run the other way. And the drift track. So you get all this rubber and depending on the weather, the rubber will change moods on you in the middle of this. And it's also a very old track. Yes. Like they, very old track. They've modified the design, a but a lot of it is is basically what it was like in the fifties. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and uh so don't if this doesn't make sense to you, go back and listen to it again. Last year, we actually all grabbed our drinks, and this is in the pre-Rona world, and we walked around that track. And Chris, I think you probably spent 90 minutes walking us around this track. It's uh, two point, I want to say it's 2.2 1. 1. 2 miles. One, 1. Okay, 1. 1.9 9 miles, 1.9 mile uh, uh, track. The, the, the notes from Lemons say the track is open for walking from five to seven. Okay. So I can't lead a track walk with 30 people like last year or like i was no. supposed to do this year actually we were we were supposed to have the official lemons one official, official lemons rookie. advanced yeah. and rookie track walks led by the four of us in two separate groups it was going to be great we can't do that this year um but get yourself out there and do it 
Yes. Like there's absolutely. so much, there's so much that you're going to see by walking it that you don't see when you drive it. Yes. And, and, and understand the, the difference of the pavements and everything that Chris said. So, and again, I say this, so then I was lucky enough, Chris and I got out there and we did some practice laps. He drove, then I drove. And when I got into the car, when it was, you know, working properly, I was, I was within a half second. So mm -hmm. this is, this isn't his opinion. This is researched, bestowed, given fact. That's so, like your opinion, man. <laughs> hey man uh you know and and even after a flat tire last year that honda started in third place so listen to everything that the man just told you right yeah. there on this one it's a it's a the car the car has led or been in second in that race every year for a couple of years so. <laughs> no pressure no, no pressure. pressure nope yeah. not at all so uh let, let's wrap thompson up here it's getting late. Yeah. Chrissy looks like she's ready to go to sleep. And <laughs> I have an impromptu, hella sweet or but terrible that will take literally five seconds, Chrissy. Can you handle this? Are those Jeff five seconds or regular people's five right? seconds? Right? Okay. <laughs> On the spot, hella sweet or but terrible, would you drive what I'm about to share? Which uh, I saw in my parking lot today. My, my gut already but, tells me no. Would you drive it where, though? On the street. No. Yeah. Yeah, I would. That's, that's, that's not tragic. Chris, Chris, do you want to describe it since you're our Honda guy? This is a, uh, a 90 to 93 Accord wagon. Uh, it has a moderate body kit. It actually looks like a Subaru GC front bumper. It's got a scooped hood. It's got some side skirts. Um, those wheels are actually circa 2005 racing heart replicas. Yeah, they're yeah. big. Painted too. white. They're like, yeah, like they're, they're eighteen. They're like they're eighteen. Yeah, eighteen. Yeah. Maybe nineteen. Um, it's it's like a light blue. It, it it's like it's done, but it's fairly tasteful for what it is, and it's kind of period correct. It like, is I, period, except it's got the knockoff APC seats and the Takata seat belts in it. Yeah. My my money says it's an automatic it is it's not very, I checked. it's very clean though like very clean very clean it is clean i'll give you clean it is clean. yeah well fact yeah there yeah all right well that that's my uh would you rock it i saw it in the parking lot and said my neck snap like bing where did that come from <laughs> where did that come from if it's, if it's done for right life yo if it's done right it's got a prelude h22 and about 200 horsepower oh uh, you know what this was a grill so i could have if i see it again i'll, I'll get a little snapshot under the hood so anyway that was my uh on the spot i just wanted to get to it before we get to our favorite section of the day just the the tip. 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 all right we're talking rushing don't do it yeah Rest russians don't no. mess with our election stop it I'm interrupting me. All right. I was just thinking about what happens on Saturday during a race. You and your teammates are probably sitting around watching your phones. What's on your phone? Race monitor, probably. Porn hub. I don't know. Um, and when a call comes in the radio. Only in the Mino. And your car and your, it's something, it's your car and something's broken. So everybody starts to scramble. And uh, if you're doing well in your class or right or in the race or both, um, you're all crazy. <laughs> The Team America secret signal. No. Oh, I just wish you should. Ha you just need to watch the video just for this. That's what's going on. So uh, bad things can really happen when you rush. Okay, so have a plan. This seems crazy to most people because they don't have a plan to start with. But um, who's going to handle a fix? Who hands? Who whose hands and head probably was going to be in the smallest space that everybody's trying to crane in to see like what's going on under there. Um, and so that maybe who's going to be a tool runner. So if you have somebody, it's, it's sometimes it's better and faster to have one person standing in this toolbox who can get whatever's requested. That person should probably know where things are and how their tool setup is just so then they're the people that are actually going to go find the tools. Where are all those big and heavy things that you are going to trip over? Where are they? And what about when you have those big and heavy things that you need to move and put somewhere, talking about the jack and other things, but uh, when you put the jack under the car, because you're going to rushing and you're going to try to put it under and you're just going to throw it under there and it's precarious, what's going to happen? What happens if the car falls down? Like, what do you, maybe on somebody or not on somebody, race over, right? 
so all of you done you've done a whole Season bunch of rushing over. right you've done a whole lot of rushing and it's not helping anybody so i we're not talking about this for speed it's not because you're trying to do things the fastest it's because so people don't get stepped on they don't get rolled over they don't get kicked all of those bad things and really and this is serious stuff i think if uh the car the car can be crazy hot there's always spiky things hanging off of it um uh, it's so easy to be able to get cuts scrapes bruises whatever it can all happen so quickly so uh seriously no one go- wants to go to the hospital in these times on this race and also they're closed this weekend i'm pretty sure all of you are- had some your wheels are probably going to be 500 degrees if you're if you've been going this hard so watch out Mental. Do you want to say something? Got his hand up. I've seen three truly brilliant pit stops in real life on the amateur side of this. I and get it. Every and every one of those cases, it was exactly what Chrissy talked about. The first one was uh, the Fat Crack Racing Team. They lost an axle on their Honda Accord, and they did exactly this. One guy literally, his job was to hold the axle, the new axle. The car pulled in. The driver starts unbuckling. Someone yells at him, don't you do a damn thing. And he sat in the car and someone handed him a bottle of water. Someone else put a jack under the car. That was the person's only job. They jacked the car up. They slid a jack stand underneath it. Left on the jack, but they had the jack stand underneath it. They hit the wheel. The axle comes out. Guy hands axle to person. New axle goes in. They did it all with welding gloves because Chris said they were 500 degrees. That car, a a Honda, a mid-80s Honda Accord axle swap less than 20 minutes back on the track. I saw a brake pad swap. This enabled us to win our class at, in AER at Mid-Ohio. Exactly the same thing. We knew the brakes were going. We knew we weren't going to make it till the end of the race. Two people on either side uh, with holding brake pads in their hands. They both had impact guns ready to pull the wheels off. Beside them were two other people with jack stands and jacks, and they jacked the car up, got the jack stands underneath it, did exactly what they could. Three minutes, 14 seconds for a front brake pad change on an ND, uh, NC Miata. Back out, one there. And the last one was last year at Thompson when Chris got a wire. Who the hell gets a safety wire in a tire? But we got a safety Us. wire in a tire. When exactly. How long did that tire change take? Three laps. Yeah, but Chris, did you get out of the car? Six minutes? Nope. No, no, you well, didn't. Well, I don't know that the whole tire change well, took that no, long we had, because we had to go around. No. Yeah, go by the time I came in, yes, uh, we, said, we said, oh, the tire's flat. Okay, great. Grab the tools. We had no idea what the problem was at that point. Grab mm-hmm. the tools. Uh, remove the side skirt to be able to even put a jack under the car. Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Get the jack under, get the tire off, go get the other tire, you know, get it back on, torque down, drive around the garage. You're allowed to get out of the track an and then you had to get back on track. Dale checks my wristband. Right. So realistically, the, the, the wheel swap, the diagnosis and wheel swap took uh, under a minute. Fact. I, I have everyone to say had that. an assigned job and the primary on the car was in the car, stayed in the car, and everyone <laughs> did exactly what Chrissy just said. And on Sunday morning, despite having a flat tire for an entire lap and a six minute pit stop because of all the nonsense that goes with it, that car started in what position? Third. Damn skippy. So I, I should say that uh Chris calls on the radio that there's something wrong with the suspension. Uh, I immediately suit up. I put on gloves. I put on my knee pads. My knee pads are always on. He pulls in before he even gets it in the garage. I've already started looking under it and have seen that the tire is bad. I shout. And you cleared, you cleared everything. I shout tire, tire, tire. And I don't have to say you go get a tire. You go get this. You go get this. Everyone kind of knew that I was going to dive under it. And everyone fed me exactly what I needed because I said, it's a tire, it's a tire, it's a tire. Yeah, but that's not necessarily the way to go. I mean, and, and clearing things are one thing that when Chris and I were talking about this beforehand is making sure that everything, like if you're sitting around, maybe cleaning things up so your pet, your pet spot, oh, spot is not our, full of stuff. Our pit spot was ready. I mean, Absolutely. We are, we're always ready, but that's yeah, kind of yes. thing that this is what we are. But again, we keep talking about winning. This is not necessarily about winning. It's not necessarily about when you're coming in and you're not, you may be not doing this very fast, but again, things are hot. Things are spiky. Things are, you know, just don't scramble. Even if you think it's going to take 20 minutes, 
or it's going to be a couple hours. Just making sure that you're all safe about it. Do it. I, I apologize because I, you know what, I twisted your your intent, and you're absolutely right. But in all three of those, everybody touching hot, spiky, you know, stuff was 100% safe, and because they took the extra 30 seconds to just breathe, let's do this safely, let's do it right, and speed is a fourth or a fifth factor in this you can work quickly but don't rush right everything yeah i'm, I'm sorry chrissy i i i meant to reinforce what you said and i i went down a, the wrong path and if your paddock's yeah. dirty then you're gonna step in that giant bucket of hot oil from something else that someone else is doing <laughs> and that's gonna ruin then, your day and then even though we don't have black betty this weekend that just means that our rambutans are you know they get they get bruised no we don't have rambutans either all right Next week, we'll recap on how we did, and let's hope it was good. Absolutely. It'll be something. It'll be something. Wait, we'll get there, maybe. It'll, it'll be something. <laughs> oh, boy. Thanks for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We also hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building, because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you're joining us at Thompson, wear a mask. Stay the frick out of my paddock, people, because I don't want to talk to you. I'll get you a sticker on the side. You don't need to talk, all right? Everyone can be racing. We can yell. It's right. awesome. The stickers are in there. Go ahead and help yourself. Uh, listen, if you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It's totally free. Then go to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. It also is free. Push the button right there to subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, we have no idea if the button shows up there. It'll, it'll show up there eventually. Oh, my gosh. My thing moved. Here we go. Uh, uh, even if you hate us, give us five stars. Tell us why. If you have any questions or show ideas, drop a comment on our Facebook page, Everyone Racers, or email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com. Find us on Instagram or Twitter at everyone.racers. Thanks again, and until next week, keep the shiny side up. Unless, like us, there is no shiny side. Then just keep those wheels down. You know, you have to stop the recording.